Life Force is not only one of the most exciting shoot 'em ups on the NES, it's also one of the best two-player co-op games for the system. Konami was one of the greatest third-party developers for the NES, with hits like Castlevania, Metal Gear, and Contra. It would be hard to have a satisfying collection of classic games without owning at least a couple of their silver-labeled cartridges. But before they were a premier developer for the NES, Konami got its start designing games for the arcade. They made a few popular cabinets in the early 80s, including Jungler and Frogger, but the game that put them on the map was 1985's Gradius. Gradius was known for its intense difficulty, but also for its innovations. It introduced options, which appear in the game as floating orbs that mimic your attack, therefore doubling your firepower. In the arcade, you could have up to four of these. Gradius was also famous for its power meter system. Players would collect capsules which could be spent on the fly during gameplay to obtain instant upgrades. By waiting to collect more capsules, you could potentially earn a stronger upgrade, but if you die, you'd lose almost all of the capsules collected, leading to some exciting risk versus reward gameplay. Konami wanted to follow up Gradius with a sequel, but director Machigushi Hiroyasu did not want to just make more of the same game. He wanted to keep pushing the boundaries of the genre to make something even better. That new game was called Salamander, and at first glance, it looks a lot like Gradius. You're still controlling the Vic Viper space fighter, and you're still blasting aliens as the screen scrolls horizontally. However, after defeating the first boss, your ship dramatically flips around, and suddenly the game changes perspective, becoming a vertically scrolling shooter. This change happens at the end of each stage, adding a ton of variety to the gameplay. In modern times, other shooter games switch perspectives, but in 1986, this was mind-blowing. Salamander's other big improvement was the introduction of a second player. Player 2's ship was known as Lord British and was likely piloted by Benedict Cumberbatch. Having a second player helped mitigate the difficulty and made the game more fun. In Gradius, if you lose a life, you're sent back to a checkpoint, which could be very frustrating. In Salamander, you not only respawn right where you died, but you can even get your options back if you move fast enough. Salamander was popular in Japanese arcades, and when Konami decided to localize the game for North America, they added in a story. Instead of fighting through space, the Vic Viper must go inside a gigantic alien organism called Sentinel XR1 to exterminate the cosmic bacteria within. Areas with starfield backgrounds were changed to a more organic looking mesh, and the title was changed to Life Force. Once again, the game was popular, and considering that the original Gradius had sold about a million copies on the NES, Konami was eager to develop a home port of Life Force. In the arcade, Life Force didn't use the power meter system from Gradius, and instead opted to go with a more traditional power-up system. Players must not have liked this very much, so an enhanced version of the game was released in Japanese arcades using the Life Force title. This version implements the original power meter system from Gradius, and when Konami developed the home version for the NES, they used the power meter here as well. 
Some elements had to be scaled down for the NES, so you can only have two option chips instead of four, although surprisingly, the Japanese version allows for three options. Still, this version doesn't make a lot of compromises and still includes the full two-player co-op experience. To make it all work, there is some flicker and a bit of slowdown, but overall, the game plays pretty smoothly considering the limitations of the 8-bit hardware. The arcade version was pretty short, so for the NES, some levels were combined, and a couple of all-new stages were introduced. These new stages add some more meat to the experience, and are a welcome addition. The chiptune soundtrack sounds great on the NES, and these upbeat arrangements will really get your blood pumping as you blast through the alien bacteria. So of course the game was a success when it released in North America in August of 1988. There weren't a lot of great two-player cooperative games on the NES at the time, and the enormous boss enemies were extremely impressive for an 8-bit game in the late 80s. In some areas, Life Force was marketed as the sequel to Gradius, and this seemed to be true considering the next game in the series to be released in North America was Gradius 3 on the Super Nintendo. But Life Force is actually a spin-off, not a true sequel. The real Gradius 2 was released for the Famicom in Japan in December of 1988, but it would not be officially released in North America until it was included as part of the Gradius collection on the PSP in 2006. This is really a shame, because while I wouldn't say that Gradius 2 is better than Life Force, it is also excellent and certainly worth playing if you're a fan of the series. In modern times, players and critics still appreciate Life Force for its perspective-shifting gameplay and intense boss battles. When IGN released their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they ranked Life Force at number 38. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. Your ship is extremely fragile. A single hit will detonate the Vic Viper and will cost you almost all of your power-ups. You do get a few continues in this game, but if you die one too many times, it'll be game over. But what if I told you where to find every hidden power-up and extra life? What if I told you about a secret glitch that can give you 255 lives? And what if I told you the best way to defeat every boss? Even the heart and soul of Zelos himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, We'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. And please join our Patreon for access to an exclusive Discord community and a chance to vote on future episodes. This episode was suggested and voted on by members of our Patreon community. Let's get started! Life Force. The good old Konami code from Contra will work on this game, so if you press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A before you start up a game, you'll start with 29 lives in reserve. Now that's a lot of lives, but if that's not enough for you, 
there is a way to get 255. Start up a two-player game, get player one killed twice, and get player two killed once. So player one should have zero lives in reserve, and player two should have one. Now down at the bottom of the screen, try to line up the two ships so that they're directly on top of each other, so that it looks like there's just one flashing ship. It should look like this. You'll be safe down here at the bottom of the screen, at least for now. When you get close to the wall, have player one start mashing A as quickly as possible, and when both ships die, player one should steal player two's last life, and player two will suddenly respawn with 99 lives in reserve. Well, it looks like 99, but if you die a couple times, it won't decrease the counter at all, because there's actually 255 there, which should hopefully be enough for you to finish the game. All right, let's start up a real run. At the beginning of the game, we want to get powered up, so fly roughly to the center of the screen where we can start clearing out these lines of enemies, and when you clear an entire line, the last enemy will drop a power-up capsule. If you're too far to the left, these enemies will start zigzagging around, making them harder to hit, but if you're at least halfway to the right, they'll stay in a nice neat line. Press A to spend the pods you find. I like to start with one speed upgrade, then I get the laser, which is the fourth one from the left, and if there's enough after that, get one option and one missile. Down here near the bottom, there's an enemy that drops another pod, but after you collect it, quickly fly to the right to avoid the walls that will be closing in. Two arms appear here, and you'll need to quickly shoot through the orange part of at least one of them to get through before the walls close in. There's also some hidden bonus points near where the upper arm was. Just shoot in that general area, and you'll hear a noise if you get it. Up here, we'll be able to clear another orange enemy that drops a pod. This time, we'll be able to cash in those pods for our second option, which is the most options we can have in this version. Don't forget that if you die, when you respawn, if you quickly collect your options before they drift off the screen, you'll be able to get them back, and although you won't have your laser or missile upgrades anymore, at least you'll have more firepower with the options. Don't try to pass the horns until they're receding into the ground. Just to the right of the first horn on the top, there's some hidden bonus points. After you pass the last horn, quickly head to the right. The walls will be closing in. Hopefully you have some missiles to clear out those enemies at the top and bottom of the screen, and then it's time to try to clear out the vines. The blue fruits take a lot of shots to kill, so get close to them as you fire, and there's a hidden one up at the end of the left patch of vines. If you don't have any options, just try to stay in line and don't move up and down. And when you get past the vines, wait here until this formation appears, then carefully fly through, tapping down twice at the end. Shoot the arm and its vulnerable orange link, and then quickly take out the turrets on the other side. We're going to need to fly through this pink wall, and if you're fully powered up, you want to fly all the way to the right and hold to the right as you blast through. Down here, if you get close to the bottom, we'll be able to find an extra life. If you're not fully powered up, you want to try to quickly mash the attack button here. That'll get you through the wall safely. You could use a turbo controller to help shoot through that wall, but keep in mind, if you're using a turbo controller with this game, you should turn the turbo off when using the laser. And that brings us to our first boss, the Golem. You'll see that this pink wall is actually just an illusion, and you should start the battle by flying up here to the upper right corner. Wait up here until the second arm starts to pop out, then fly down to the bottom, this will cause the boss to start moving in a counterclockwise circle. Fly around it and allow the boss to make one full circle, which will give it time for the eye to open up, and then just go straight across the middle to the left, which will line up your options with your ship and give the boss a full blast in the eye with your lasers. 
Now, if you'd rather have 5,000 points than an extra life, there is a hidden bonus up here at the top of the wall. But let's talk about the strategy for fighting Gollum without any power-ups at all. We're going to start out in the same fashion by flying to the upper right corner. Remember, that wall is just an illusion. Wait up here until you start to see the boss's second arm pop out, and then we're going to fly down to the bottom, which will make the boss start moving in that counterclockwise pattern. And we're going to fly circles around the boss, also moving counterclockwise, to try to avoid the arms. So here we go, avoiding the arms, we're going to go around the boss one full time, and we're going to get kind of close to the eye, and you just want to hold down the fire button. You don't really need a turbo controller. If you're close enough, you'll rapidly fire just by holding the button down. When the arms start closing in, move away from the eye and fly around the boss again, and after a few strikes, you should be able to win. Stage two is the volcanic stage, and it's time to try out the new perspective. Just like in stage one, there are lines of enemies to blast for power-up pods, and if you move to the middle of the screen, you'll be able to shoot them while they're still in a straight line. Hopefully you have some power-ups left from stage one, but I'm going to be starting each stage from scratch in this video, so you'll know what to do if you're starting out cold. I like to start out by getting one level of speed, and then I get the laser next, which will make it easier to clear out the lines of enemies. Then make sure to get at least one pack of missiles. Missiles are very good in this level, and can hit the enemies that hide on the sides. After the missiles, try to get at least one option. We're going to be coming to a pair of volcanoes, and believe it or not, in this game, you can kill the volcanoes. So you want to shoot directly above where the rocks are spawning from, and if you shoot it enough times, the volcano will become extinct. There's also a hidden point bonus just above the volcano on the right side. Over here, the path forks, and if you take the right path, you'll be able to clear an enemy that drops a power-up pod, but make sure to take out the volcano before you go through it. I bet the people of Pompeii wish they had thought of shooting a volcano. And once you get past this volcano on the left, move down towards the lower right corner and get ready to dodge the gray rocks. These rocks cannot be destroyed and there is no safe place to hide. You can touch the right wall where it's flat, but the left wall is instant death, so be careful when you're over there. That's why I like to try to avoid the rocks on the right side instead of the left. The large gray rocks are also indestructible and will break into three parts whenever they come in contact with anything. In this area, we need to watch out for the turrets on the wall, and if you have missiles, that will make it easy, but if you don't, make sure to take the middle path and take out the turret on the right wall, then another one on the left, before quickly zipping up through the destructible wall in the middle. Continue to stay on the middle path here, and you can collect a few more power-up pods from the enemies that cling to the wall. Just don't do anything careless and bump into a wall when you're trying to collect an item. If you die in this area, try to at least get a set of missiles before the next mini-boss. There's a hidden point bonus on the right side before this large patch of dirt that you need to shoot through, and you can find some power-up pods in the middle or right side. And here's why you need the missiles. You'll want them to clear out the basic enemies in this room, and you can get rid of those barriers before the orbs appear. Try to stay at the bottom, avoiding the bouncing balls and shooting the orbs at the top. When all three are destroyed, the screen will start scrolling, and if you position one of your options to the left as you take the path on the right, it will uncover a hidden one-up. The boss here is the intruder, and this guy can be tough. At the beginning of the fight, you'll be safe in the lower right corner, so start out down here, and as the boss starts to rotate to the left, follow it to the left, and try to shoot at the barriers as it moves back to the right. 
then hide over in the corner as it passes. If the fight goes on long enough, the arms in the center will swing out wider and wider, and eventually your safe spot on the right won't be safe anymore. But if you have the laser and some options, you may be able to defeat the boss before it becomes an issue. So we should be able to finish it on this pass, and that's it. Now if you don't have any power-ups, this is going to be a lot more difficult. Let's start with the mini-boss. Clear out the enemies on the right, fly up the right side, and then quickly take out the barrier on the left. You want to take out the left orb as quickly as possible, and then hurry up and take out the one in the middle. Now you should be able to hide here, and the orb on the right won't be able to hit you with any of the balls that it launches. If we wait long enough, some sort of time limit will expire, and the screen will start scrolling again. So you don't have to actually clear out any of the orbs to move forward here, but it is good to destroy at least one of them so that you'll be able to get through whenever the screen starts to scroll. So we're just going to hide here, this is the safest way to do it. And after a few moments, there it is, the screen is scrolling again. Now I don't recommend that you actually do this, but I wanted to show that it is possible to carve a path over to the bonus points on the left side, even if you don't have any options. So I don't really recommend that you try for that, but if you want to, it is possible. If you don't have any power-ups, the intruder may seem impossible, but it can actually be defeated without losing a single life. We're going to start out by taking advantage of the safe spot in the lower right corner, just as we did with the fully powered ship. This time we're probably not going to be able to defeat the boss fast enough, and those arms are going to start swinging very wide. When the arms swing wide, the only way to avoid them is to fly around the intruder, staying close to the central ship. Flying that close to the boss may seem a little bit insane, but if you try to take a wider angle, you'll almost certainly be hit by the arms. And that brings us to stage 3, the prominent stage, and in my opinion, this is the most difficult one in the game. Just like in the previous stages, there are some enemies to shoot to get power pods, but there are not as many this time. Try to at least get a laser power up, and if you have enough, grab a missile power up as well. This should go without saying, but once you get to the area with the fire, don't touch the ceiling or the floor. If you wait long enough to collect that blue power pod, you'll be able to clear out the two birds that appear, and you can get two red pods from them. Otherwise, don't shoot those flying birds because they'll turn into a fireball. It's possible to despawn this dragon by aggressively flying towards the right side of the screen, and you can see that we didn't have to clear it. If you don't despawn the dragon, make sure to quickly shoot it in the face because it will continue to chase you. In this area, waves of flame will erupt from the top and bottom of the screen. You want to hang out in the middle of the left side, and then move up or down to get around the flame waves. Whenever you see one of them spawn, it will appear either one time or three times, but nothing in between. Once again, we can use a blue pod to clear a line of firebirds, but then we need to get back to the left to avoid the flame waves again. There's a one up at the top of the screen here, but don't go after it until that top flame wave is done firing. After we pass this flame wave at the bottom, we'll have a short break from the flame waves, but that doesn't mean this section is easy. There are still tons of fireballs that pop up out of the flames, and some firebirds that we can clear for more power-ups. Stay towards the back and hopefully you have a set of missiles to help with the fireballs. And just keep clearing as many of the firebirds as you can, grabbing power-up pods when possible, but be careful not to touch the top or the bottom of the screen. 
After these two flame waves fire, there are two 5,000 point bonuses towards the middle of the screen, so just keep shooting in that general area and you should be able to reveal them. And after that, there's a flame wave at the top that fires three times, followed by a flame wave at the bottom that fires three times, and then we'll just need to defeat one small dragon, and we're on to the boss. The best way to beat these dragons is to fly towards them and let them curl around you, shooting the head as it comes near the front of your ship. And that brings us to the boss, the Cruiser Tetron. If you're fully powered up, start here at the top of the screen, which will lure the dragon to the top, then fly all the way to the bottom and position your ship so that the missiles hit the dragon in the mouth. Whenever the dragon flies down to the bottom to shoot fire at you, your laser should finish it off. Now if you need to fight one of these small dragons with your regular shot, you can see the strategy. Just let it wrap around you and shoot the head as it comes around. And here's what you should do if you have to face the Cruiser Tetron with no power-ups. Well, before that, I did want to point out that there's a safe spot down here right below the dragon's chin, but even with two options, I was not able to figure out a way to take advantage of it. So here's what to do with the regular gun. Try to stay near the bottom and you want to move up and down, shooting the dragon in the mouth, but focus on avoiding the fireballs. You don't want to go too high up on the screen because that will make it a little bit harder to hit the dragon. Just keep it down at the bottom and you should be able to win. That brings us to Cell Stage 2, and believe it or not, this one's a good bit easier than the previous two stages. As usual, we're going to move our ship up the screen so that we can shoot lines of enemies that drop power pods. And this time we're going to start with one speed, followed by a set of missiles, and if you can get it, the laser. Be careful not to touch the walls in this area, and you won't be able to shoot the large pink pulsating masses, but you should use your laser and missiles to take out the blood cells that float along the side. Eventually, you'll encounter one of these pink masses that launches smaller pink objects, and you can shoot that enemy, and you need to make sure that you do clear it. There's one right there, and there was another one earlier. If you don't kill that thing quickly, it will chase you around the screen shooting pink objects everywhere. Things start moving fast here, so you'll want to make sure that you have at least one speed power-up, although you don't want to get too many speed power-ups in this game. If you get more than two, your ship might move too fast, and then you're more likely to bump into a wall or object. So don't get too many speeds. There are lots of power pods in this tunnel, so if you can, try to get two options and two lasers. That'll give you lots of power when you come to these air sacs, which you need to clear as quickly as possible, or they'll burst open, releasing blue spheres. Those blue spheres can't be killed, and they'll bounce around on the screen for some time, which could cause major problems. So get up close and personal with these air sacs so that you can pop them quickly. As soon as you get back to the orange area, you need to get to the bottom of the screen and stay down there. Vines will start appearing in front of you, and if you're in their path, you could be instantly killed. So stay down at the bottom, no vines will spawn down there, and to be completely honest, this game is pretty cool about not having enemies sneak up on you from behind. When you see this thing that looks like a potato, it will eventually shoot out some vines, and whenever it shoots the vines, it will become vulnerable, so shoot through the vines at the bottom and quickly take out the potato. If you don't kill it fast enough, it will spawn more vines in a new position, so be careful if you need to get close. Up here, there's going to be four more power-up pods on the right side, but watch out for the large pink masses that will come down. Those cannot be cleared. Sadly, we won't be able to get enough power-up pods to get to the force shield here, 
So we'll grab an extra set of missiles, and then we'll settle down here at the bottom in the space between the player one score and the word high. This rib cage looks very menacing, and while all the lasers are going off, if you just keep shooting and stay in this one position, everything should just bounce around you and you'll be totally safe. And at the top of this massive set of ribs is a hideous alien skull. This is the boss, Gaiga. To defeat Gaiga, you want to get just slightly to the right of center and stay at the bottom of the screen and just start firing. Gaiga will move to the right as it opens its mouth and you will easily clear it. Now, if you don't have the laser or any options, well, it's going to be a bit harder. You'll need to avoid Gaiga's shots and try to shoot it in the mouth when the mouth is open. If you can lure it all the way to the right, you can despawn the right eyeball, and then Gaiga won't be able to launch it at you. You will need to watch out for the left eyeball. Whenever it launches that eye, try to shoot it, or it will chase you until the boss is defeated. With Gaiga's two eyes cleared, we're just going to continue to stay down here at the bottom, try to avoid Gaiga's shots, and just keep shooting when the mouth is open. And that will bring us to stage five, the temple. To fight the enemies for power-ups here, you want to shoot at the bottom row of enemies, and then just move up a hair to shoot the top row. So bottom row, then top row. In this stage, the top of the screen is safe, but the floor is lava, so be careful whenever you go down low. This is also true in stage one. Over here, we'll encounter some blue floating rocks, and most of them cannot be destroyed, but randomly, a few of them will be destructible, and those ones will spawn power pods. So just shoot at all the rocks and see what comes up. And then you're going to fly up above this ridge where you can take out a few more enemies for a bit more power. In this area, some spiky balls pop up from the bottom, and you want to clear those as quickly as you can, because if they hit the left side of the screen, they'll explode and spawn smaller projectiles. Fly up to the top here, taking out the turrets that line the ceiling, and hopefully you'll have some missiles to take the ones out below, or you'll have to try to dodge their projectiles. These blue ships move slowly when they're headed to the left, but if they can get behind you, they can move very fast to the right, so make sure to clear them before they get back there. This large rock has four launchers on it that summon enemies, Either clear the one at the top or the bottom, and pass it by. You won't be able to get rid of the launcher on the right side. A large cluster of enemies spawns here. You want to try to lure them down a bit, and then go all the way up to the ceiling so that they'll quickly take off to the right. Whenever you see this pointed ceiling, you want to go to the upper left corner. Just keep shooting, and you'll be totally safe even if you don't have any power-ups. Once you see the end of the spiked ceiling, some enemies are going to appear that will spawn some power-ups if we can clear them all, but watch out for the shots that they fire at us. So we'll grab a laser upgrade, and now it's time to fight the Crash Bam. This is a mini-boss, and I like to start at the top and then position my options so that it can hit the top ship. Then I can position my ship in a place that's safe to take out the one in the middle, and I can do the same for the final ship, so that's a very safe way to deal with those guys. And be aware that they will sometimes launch orange cannonballs that you can shoot to get power-ups. And that brings us to the second half of the stage. This is the actual temple. Hopefully you have some missiles here that will make it easier to clear out these turrets. If you don't, you'll have to move up and down to hit them. Remember, the bottom of the screen can kill you. If you don't have missiles, try to just quickly fly past that turret at the bottom. And here, we need to carefully navigate around these pillars. This is the most difficult one. You want to get near it and then just tap down twice. 
These ones are easy to avoid. Wait until they meet in the middle and then pass them as they recede. If you take the top route, you'll be able to find three power-up capsules, but be careful not to hit the wall on the right side. There's some enemies that appear on the walls here, and you can kill those with your options, but it may be safer to just wait until they disappear and then fly past them. And in this room, we can collect a ton of power-up pods. Don't get too greedy though. If you try to collect some and hit a wall, it won't be worth it. So I'm going to collect as many as I can, but you don't have to collect all of them for this room to help you out especially if you died somewhere in stage 5. You should be able to get a nice boost for the boss. If you can, try to at least get the laser and the force shield. If you have both of those powers, this boss will be simple. Watch out for the enemies that line the top and the bottom of this chamber, and then we'll be on our way to the boss, Tutankhamun attack. Yep. That's the name of this large pharaoh head. And at the beginning of the battle, the walls will start crumbling, and you can get killed during this part, so wait for the first brick to fall, and then fly back over to the left as the second one is falling. Then just wait here for the rest of the wall to fall apart. It'll take a few moments. If you're fully powered up, aim for the base of the snake at the top of the boss's head, and then pull over to the left so that all of your lasers are lined up. And just keep shooting, and wait for the boss to become active. At the very beginning of the fight, you won't be able to damage the boss anyways, so it's going to fly down, and when it starts to shoot at you, you want to move towards it, and get just close enough to not get hit by the orbs that are floating around the boss. You should be in the perfect position to take it out in a few seconds. Without any power-ups, we'll need to be a bit more conservative. The boss's weak point is its eye, but those orbs that hover around the boss will block some of our shots. To defeat this boss, we'll need to keep shooting the eye, but we'll need to also focus on avoiding its shots. Whenever the boss fires at us, it'll launch a warning shot, followed by a large volley of other shots. So look for that warning shot, and once you see it, that's when you should start moving. But you want to wait near the top or the bottom of the screen until you see that first shot, and then move either down to the bottom or up to the top to avoid the rest of it. Whenever the boss starts moving towards you, get to the right side of the screen and keep avoiding the boss's shots. Don't worry about shooting the boss until it moves back to the right side. It's just too dangerous. Once it gets back over there, it'll bounce up and down on the right side again for a while and you'll be able to resume your normal attack pattern. When it heads back over to the left side, do the same thing that you did before, but start down at the bottom this time instead of the top. This time you'll need to go under the boss as it heads back to the right, and this time we should hopefully be able to finish it. And that's it! We're on to the final stage! The game's final stage, The Mechanical City, is much easier if you roll in here fully powered up from the previous level. But if you have to start from scratch, it is beatable, so here's what you need to do. Try to collect as many of these pods at the beginning as you can. Some of them are hard to grab, but if you can get a laser and a missile, that will really help. If you can't get enough pods at the beginning for the good laser, this could be a spot where the ripple laser could help, but there's going to be a few more power-up pods ahead if you just hold on. And in this area, these crystal bombs will start flying towards you, and you want to stay at the bottom of the screen and strafe back and forth, left and right, shooting off your laser if you have it, and you may need to go up on the sides just a little bit to avoid some of these crystal bombs, but if you just keep moving back and forth like that, you should be able to get past them. That part is tough. 
Once you get past the crystal bombs, this stage actually gets a lot easier. Up ahead, we're really going to need some missiles, so while you go through these final enemies, make sure to grab some if you don't already have a set. As soon as you get into this green area, two turrets will start shooting at you, so dodge their projectiles and hopefully you have some missiles to take them out. And if you don't, you'll need to carefully move towards the walls and take out the one on the left and just avoid the one on the right. There's two more power-up pods that you can collect here, so if you died you may be able to at least get your missiles back, and they're going to be very useful in this corridor. Just keep shooting straight down the middle and let your missiles take out those enemies on the side. If you don't have missiles, they'll start flying back and forth across this chamber, so you'll want to get close to the wall, but don't touch it. Just get near the wall and shoot them there. Well, it wouldn't be a game in the Gradius universe without MOA heads. Hopefully you have the laser here, that will make this easier. You can only damage these when they open their mouth. But if you don't have the laser, you will need to get very close to the mouth and just hold down the fire button. That should still do the trick. This turret that hides behind the MOA head is pretty annoying. I like to try to fly past the statue and hit it with a missile. Now you'll have to face some MOA heads that leap off of the wall, and you want to try to position yourself at the top of their jump so you can shoot them as soon as they open their mouth. You'll need to clear those two before you'll be able to advance. We just got an extra life for hitting 250,000 points. And in this game, you'll get an extra life when you hit 10,000 points, and then you'll get an additional one for every 30,000 points after that. And that chirping sound means it's time to face the final boss, the heart and soul of Zelos. Well, that's what they're called anyways. The soul of Zelos is actually a dragon, and the heart, I'm pretty sure that's a big red eyeball. I don't know anybody that has a perfectly spherical heart, and I definitely don't know anyone that has a heart with a pupil or an optic nerve. If you're fully powered up, start over here on the right side. Keep shooting and as soon as the dragon appears, move diagonally down and to the left. Once the dragon is gone, take out the heart and then you'll be home free. Now if you're not fully powered up, it's going to be a little bit harder. With no power-ups, you'll need to get very close to these leaping MOA heads, and that's the best way to deal with them. You don't have to clear all of the ones after the two that jump, but watch out for that turret that starts on the right side. Once you get rid of that turret, you can take out these two MOA heads on the right side, and that's the easiest way to get through. Once again, it's time to face the heart and soul of Zelos. Even without all of those power-ups, this is still one of the easier bosses in the game. We're going to start over on the right side as we did previously, but this time we're going to start down a little bit farther. We want to position our ship so that the right wing is just on top of the bolt on the right side. And you'll see what I mean when I move there in a moment. So we're going to move over here and slowly move into this position. Don't move too far down or you'll get hit. When the dragon appears, we're just going to slide out to the left shooting it and then we want to move back to the right. The dragon's going to go all the way up and then dive down and that will give you another great chance to shoot it. Don't forget to destroy the heart after defeating the dragon. If you don't clear the heart, you'll be sent back to stage 4, and that is not a joke. This part's called the escape, and you want to position yourself all the way at the top of the screen, right above the 2 in the high score. Now, we're going to see some walls appear. When you see two walls appear uncomfortably close to our ship, we're going to count three more and then tap to the right. So here they are there, 1, 2, 3, tap right. Count two more walls, then tap left. And then from here, you're just going to stay in this exact same position. You can put the controller down. You've won. And that's it. We've done it. 
we've beaten Life Force. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. As the Vic Viper flies away, the beast that we were inside explodes. I thought we were trying to save that thing. If we just wanted to blow it up, couldn't we have hit it with some kind of Death Star laser or something? There had to be a better way. But that's all the ending there is. If you'd like to proceed from here, you can play the game through a second time, and it'll be a little bit more difficult on the second loop, especially when fighting the bosses. Some of them have new attacks. Well, I hope this guide was able to help you finally beat Life Force, restoring peace in the galaxy. If it did, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more massive alien planets to blow up. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.